Is it just a talk shit league? Nope. Not no more. It's not the same right there league either. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm not talking to the camera. You look. We're civilized now. Oh, we are? Yeah. But then I, I got to change my name then, right? I'm a, I'm I'm a, set, I'm a set the other leg. I'm Does sorry. that mean I got to change my name? We're civilized now. Yes. All right, guys. Welcome to the UBA. We're live here from Laurel Lanes for the cruiserweight match between Leah and Matt. It's just about to get started. He's going to get seven. Seven count or seven pins? Seven pins. He's going to get seven pins. Is it the same thing? Alright, we're gonna assume it. Yeah. Seven count, seven pins. Oh, 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 oh! Oh! You were wrong twice, you were wrong twice. Oh, Lord. Fuck I haven't been wrong a lot, a lot. Alright. And oh, Leah's so gonna start off for game Chino? one. What? You with Chino? I'm not with anybody. I'm with oh, myself. You were, you were out then. I'm with myself. You were out. Don't win. You were out. Myself. You with yourself. Well, you both were out. All right, and she leads off with a strike. We're not talking about, let's not talk about Tom right now. Tom will give me a six. Just remind everybody that Tom Hunter pinned himself today. Let's not talk about Tom today. Was that a high one? Was it a clean one? Was it a clean one? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. His first game, his first game and his third game added up to his second game. That's not good. I shot a 630. All right, Matt starts off with a double wood. And he picks up the spare. That's how fun. You don't do that now. Oh. Now you do it. He needed that wood, actually. He still won it. It's a nine count. All right. It's two different. Oh my lord! I got a fuck up in here. Got nobody here. Yeah, we're different. Yeah, we're different. Everyone. Not everybody over there. No, there's five. There's five. There's five. 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 Commentator Jen Schwartz says five. All right, and Matt with the spare. Seven. Let's see if she picks it up. All right, and we got a pick up here from Leo on. Second frame. Oh, that was high. Oh. I called that one. Ah. 
All right, and we got a strike in the third frame from Leah. You got you I was one you Third frame for Matt, he leaves the four, seven, ten. All right. Anybody want to call the camp? They don't do it no more. I'll give him three. Oh. Oh. Look at that. That's ten. He got lucky. Ten. He got lucky. That's the second time. That motherfucker could have been talking with a sheet in our door. second time. He never said nothing about Al yet, though. You never said nothing about him. You owe shit up for him. I said he threw two jerseys. Second time. What you mean? You said him. Yeah. What about him? I, I, him. I tried to give him advice. You don't let him. I can't help Alphonse. You talk shit. I make money off Alphonse. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Oh, it's over. All right, pick it up. <laughs> All right, we got Matt with a strike in the fourth frame. Watch him tie, watch him tie. Watch him tie. Pick it up again. Two. Spare yeah. by Leah in the fifth. All right, it's going to a tip frame roll off. Uh, Chino's playing frame bowling. Oh, she's pretty good up here. That sucks. Never had the energy on my team. Hold on, I, I still drink it. I drink. I there you go. And, and that's what we all do. See crack racks. Yeah, crack racks there. Yeah. All right, we got Matt with a double going into the six. Get them there in the 
And he strikes in the sixth for Turkey. Okay, we got a strike by Lee in the sixth. And she picks up the double wood. It's a 10 pin in the seven. Right now we have Leah at 134 and Matt at 154. Strike in the 
shake it and he's got a strike. That thing went through the head. Man, right you throw a better ball. <laughs> Going into the tenth with a strike. Yo, why are you heckling my man? He just won. Take congratulations. Still nice have you. Like, he still say I'm good game. Right here. He still didn't say good game. <laughs> So we got Matt with a 201 and Leah going into the tent. Just a bit outside. I'm sorry. It's not mad. You're going to hear it. Okay. First strike. So for game one, we have Leah the champ with 192 and Matt with 201. Matt leads 1-0. Oh, wait a minute. Did he just throw a fork out? Oh. He just, oh. I keep talking. Hey, look, he needs prayers. He needs prayers. That's the craziest shit I've ever seen over here. Oh, my God. Not the boring match. I'm sorry. I mean, I mean both matches were interesting. It was within nine. Good game. <laughs> All right, we're going in the game two now. Matt starts starts it off with a strike. Oh, 
Somebody go to the car, give another ball. They're throwing the ball like, all right. You know? so all right, and Leah starts off with a strike as well. Good shot, Cinnabons, you know what I'm saying? up the spare. Uh, uh, shout out to the one and only Miss Schwartz, if you're nasty. Jennifer, thank you so much. All right. You're not just a syndicate, you're my syndicate. Uh, this is the voice of choice, Sean Knight Faison, right here live. And we are watching game two of a historic bout. We are watching the first ever, the first and so far, keyword so far, only cruiserweight champion. The hitter herself from the hit squad. Look at Leah Maynor. Leah up. Road to perfection continues. Three in the key, three in a row in game two for Leah Maynor. Going against Matthew. So now Matthew from from K-E-K-A, -E from Kika. Leah right now trying to continue to, to um, blaze a trail. Looking to keep this historic rain up, hopefully paving the way for a lot of new entrants into all divisions. Not just cruiserweight, we could potentially see a heavyweight lady as well. Go a little high from the left side and an eight count. So three in a row, eight count, fourth frame. Leah against Matthew. We want to thank all of you for joining us here. And first, first dose of your double dose of caffeine today. Caffeine TV, you definitely need caffeine to start your day the right way. And let's see if Leah's gonna stay awake and no chop, no mistakes, still keeping the house clean. A clean up woman indeed she is. Leah up from the hit squad. And we got Matthew up. Matthew trying to fight back and needs to start throwing some more punches because right now they're feeling like light jabs. Hey, thank you. Hey, my friend, on Tuesday. If you're going to bring it on Tuesday, no shot. Let's see if we can get a line. Let's see what line he's looking at right here. Let's see if he's going to push, push it to the limit, and hopefully the limit is, yes, 10 back. Hopefully he didn't reach his limit. Don't want to reach the ceiling right now. 
This is only game two. Leah looking to keep the pressure, keep his, keep her foot on his neck. Matthew up. Matthew getting his feet set. Slow and steady, but will it win the race? And yes, and it races right through the pocket, tripping out the four, tripping out that four pin indeed. I want to thank all of you on this lovely day for witnessing us here. Hopefully you'll come back with us when we get Kelsey Hammond we're going against Sarah Hood in our Vixens presentation. Leah taking her time. Walking that aisle. And oh, wait a minute. We have a situation right through the face, a little FaceTime for Leah Maynor. And I'm also being joined here by another heavy hitter. He may not be part of the hit squad, but he's been hitting for a minute. Mr. Not today. Not, not, what, not today, not, not in Myrtle Beach. Not for the last two weeks. I, I lost the day. Oh, I lost the dingle. Ducky lost the dingle, not Donald. Ducky. No, actually, Donald lost the dingle because I was real quiet today. Oh. I got in trouble. Oh, not the government. I, yeah, yeah. Donald got in trouble today. <laughs> See me? And Donald, and Donald bowled like shit today, not Ducky. Ducky got in trouble, and then Donald showed up and eased that shit out and then all of a sudden everything went to whatever. So that, so that necessarily wasn't him duck hunting, just the duck wasn't flying today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And du the ducks were swimming. It, it's cold. We stayed in the water today. Uh, we didn't want to didn't want we didn't want to test the air, air air climate. Well, we don't want you to be a sitting duck always, you know what I'm saying? But you know what? Speaking of, speaking of swimming, go ahead, drown in that. Uh, drown in that water right now because, you know, sometimes we, we need a little hydration. And, oh, speaking of swimming, she was swimming in that strike as she mixes it up. Leah definitely getting a little mad at herself. You saw she pushed that ball a little more, a little more speed. She was a little, a little soft on the last shot. Got a little aggressive. And that was her adjustment. Let's see if Matthew could take advantage of this. Because any little ray of light, <laughs> you better look at the sun. But hopefully he doesn't get blinded by this opportunity, and he does not. He is not blinded by the light. Matthew Gerdhart. Yeah, good, good luck pronouncing it. All right. That's why I said Matthew. Well, 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 if it is Gerhard, well, then this then this will work. Gerhard plans to go hard against the main one herself, Leah Maynor, of the hit squad. And hopefully the hit is not out on her. Because when you're a champion and when you're at the top, Everybody wants you to stop, but you can't do that. Two-time welterweight champion here. Uh, I don't know who I want between this one because they both my friends. Uh -huh. uh, but um, ain't no friends I, in this business. It ain't no friends when it comes to championship business. No, no, no. Looks like Alphonse is going to uh, give him some work. Yeah, you know it. And you know what? You know Matthew certainly wasn't friendly with that with that um, four in a row we just threw on. I'm no, just say I'm gonna just say meat shank not because I can't say what it is because that's well, trademark. He's trying to tie it up too, so she's ahead of game, right? Exactly. Was she ahead of game? Yeah, well, she lost the first. Oh, 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 so, oh, so, oh, so, ooh. Yeah, there really is no friends then. Well, there ain't no friends, and right now she is not being friendly to the pocket. And sometimes you got to make it lean back. And she made the ten pin lean back a little bit. Yeah, a little New York action. She may not be from the Bronx. It's Brooklyn all day in that situation. But you know what? <laughs> New York hip hop is New York hip hop. And right now, Matthew, right now, he's looking up at the screen. He's looking up. I know it's it's real. It's always real. And I know. How you doing, baby? Shout out! Sh shout out to Mr. Alfonso Israel. Israel of the, of the chosen ones. And woo, and this woo, and this is why a lot of people have chosen Leah to be a threat. He ready to come to the cruiserweights. He ain't ready for that. He ain't ready for that work. Alphonse. He ain't ready for that work. He just got the belt. He would have never got the belt if my man didn't have to go into the cruiserweights. Well, they force us out of that division when you when your scores are. Yeah. Oh man, so we had a little discussion about some welterweights, and so hopefully soon we'll see some welterweight action. Oh, and that was a welterweight shot by a cruiserweight contender, Matthew Gerbhard. That has got to that's got to hurt hard. 
and and the Richard Nixon, yes, two fingers up, right there, two on each side, peace signs, but that is not a peaceful leave for Matthew Gerdhardt, and he's going to go for two, I would assume, and hopefully he, oh, made that only one. They had a saying, wood is good, and right there, you know what, Woodchuck did not, did not chuck all the wood out there, and... There is a light that shines. Special for Leah. Crank it up. Crank it up, Bob. Let's just see if strikes stay in common. Hip-hop aficionados will get that reference. Yo, Tom. He touching Roscoe. I need this. Yeah, I know he is. Matthew up one game trying to trying to put some pressure, trying to trying to go 2-0. Oh, but if Leah does not have a hiccup, does not have a, have a reflux situation, she will not be philanthropic, and she will not give this opportunity back. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Didn't he say he Leah collecting herself, not blinking at the fact that he just, well, made a mess. Taking her time, getting set. Oh, she pushed that one. But she, mm, not, not enough. And it is not double vision you are seeing two Richard Nixons in one picture frame. And in one frame, we still have a game. It's still a match, but this right here is still a game. Let's just see if uh, she can give a little lesson on how to get wood instead of trying to play hero ball to Mr. Gerdhart. And I believe she's going to get two on that, definitely. Because one definitely bested hit. I'm sorry, two definitely bested his one. <laughs> Leah right now collecting herself. Any mark forces Matthew to throw two. Leah needs to throw the first one to send a message saying that she's still here. It's got a hook. It's got a hook, and it hooked indeed. Hit him with a left, and he got to come back with a right. And if you don't throw it better, you can't do better. She threw it better on that shot. Leah collecting herself. Leah setting in the shot. Sinking her feet in the ground and then letting it go down. And she puts the ball down. And, oh, the 10 pin. The 10 pin stands up for its rights on the right. Potential 206 finish for Leah. Potential 217 finish for Matthew Gerdhart. Assuming that he throws all three. All right, that hooks. All right, and covers the spare. So 206 finish for Leah Maynor. It is not over. Spare and 10 gives him the win. Spare and nine creates a tie, and then we will have a roll off. Matthew Gerdhardt, if he loses this game, he will definitely, well, he'll be hard on himself especially about that little debacle. And oh, and that locks up game two. It was a whole lot of give and give and give, and finally just someone decided to take in the 10th. K-E-K-A -E finding a way to go up two games to zero over Leah Maynor of the Hit Squad. Shot goes up. Ooh, and a little pressing down and strong kick on the leg sweep. Sweeping the leg a la Cobra Kai. And taking out the nine pin. Mathematically, I had made a mistake. 227 finish. 227 finish. Assuming a strike 
is to be had here. And Matthew with three beautiful shots. And he is up two games to zero on the now cruiserweight champion, Leah. Leah Maynard. I know she wants to go for it all. I know she needs to, she needs to pick it up and find a way to hang in there. She has to win four games in a row. She has to take it to six games. And she's got to end it in those six games if she wants to remain the cruiserweight champion of the Northeast. And kicking out the 10 the same way she would have liked to on a same reaction. So right now, this is when you play go get them, go get them style bowling, where now you just got to attack the pocket. You would like to finesse through. You would not like to get a good reaction. She has, from what I can see, a very smooth, smooth cover, smooth finish, something that gives you length and allows you to finish a little more accurately, less erratic. Going up the boards from the right, stroking up the line. But Matthew, as you can see, little inside out game, a lot of wet to dry, and that's what can happen with an inside out game as opposed to a game that goes up the boards. Up the boards, um, a little more of a targeting aspect and a pushing aspect, making it to the pocket. But when you're playing from the inside mechanically, you cannot have a lot of flaws, small window and small margin of error if you're playing that style. Adjust for his spare. And again, not learning from what was almost a costly mistake before, not getting the wood, playing hero ball. Yes, it is a makeable split. But one thing about makeable splits, just like smiling faces, they'll lie to you sometimes. They'll make you feel like you can go for it all when you should have just gone for most. And when sometimes when you go for most, you end up broke. Matthew looking to adjust off his last shot. And very precise on that one. Precision is key, especially when you're playing where Matthew Gerhardt plays. Gerhardt definitely channeling the name on the back of his jersey, looking to continue to crank it up on the misses of the hit squad. And Mrs. Hitter gets a nine count. If I can get a good look at that. That is an eight count. That is double wood. Had to get a little different angle, a different look at it. Leaving leaving the three, leaving the three nine. Just you said it on five, don't mean you gotta give him a game. Uh, Leah looking for that ball of hurry, and it does. Almost left something on the table herself. Game two indeed was close between Leah and Matthew. It was all a matter of who kept the entire house clean because all marks with, with the strikes mixed in definitely would have got them that game. Leah, again, stroking very nicely up the line. Exactly. Playing a beautiful, smart game as she always has for years. I've been on the lanes with her. And um, I still have the scars to prove it. I'm man enough to admit that. <laughs> one, one of the one of the very very fine bowlers to come out of the great state of New York, NYC, Brooklyn to be exact. Shout out to South Fab, Brooklyn in the house, and let's see if he can stay in the house. And this could be a potential 278 finish, assuming. That Matthew can go sheet. Shout out to the Walter Waits right next door, getting it in. Like I always say, Walter Waite action, that's the foundation because that's where we all started. 
You could be 240 in front, but don't forget where you came from. And even a step before heavyweight is cruiserweight. But that, that looks like some heavyweight hits from Matthew Gerhardt looking to go potentially three games to zero. I like Leah's strategy of just going right for the pocket. But hopefully she does not tense up. A lot of times when you get tense, you start to be too careful, but you don't want to get careless. It's a thin line between going for all and going for broke. Let's just see if Leah could just stay on task. She's backed into a corner, but she's down, not out. <laughs> and Leah going up, gets a little more in that ball. She hit it a lot. I, you, I saw her hand at the bottom of the ball. She was really digging into that shot and got, got too much reaction. I think she was trying to find a way to get a stronger reaction on that lane, and she overworked her hand on that. Two, four, seven, easy to make, but also easy to miss. Hopefully she's focusing, going right for the four pins and up, uh, and exactly, exactly what I, what I thought. Very unfortunate mistake, kind of gives back uh, the edge to the challenger, Matthew Gerdhardt. Leah does not want to be a, in a 3-0 and situation. Really gets into that shot. And now getting a lot of over-under reaction, now overthrowing. I feel like she should really breathe and, re and recollect herself. Because every single time you make a mistake, it turns from 1-on-1 -on -one to 2-on-1. -on -one. And you do not want a 2, you don't want a 2-on-1 -on -one situation. You versus your opponent, and you versus yourself. Another makeable one, but it's got to hurry. And oh no, Leah getting into her own head right now. Certainly cannot be happy. It's not over. L Leah's a tough bowler, and there's a reason why she's gotten to this point. And it is not over. Leah's a fighter. Leah knows how to throw them hands. And she's got to, well, I was going to say she's got to maybe hope for, for at least a hiccup. It looks like Matthew learning from his, from his first frame mistake. And Matthew is looking, he's looking to put this away as long as he stays focused. He needs to stay on task as well. Matthew Gerdhard going up. I know it's one, I know it's another. Right, 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 right. Matthew is looking way more comfortable than he did on that first frame. That first frame definitely, definitely doesn't, well, is definitely not looking that same way now. After that first shot, he readjusted. He realized that he came out of the ball a little wide. Chicken winged it a little bit on the very first frame. Ever since then, been staying nice and tight with, with his body. Staying real focused, finishing through his shot. Let's see if it's the same situation on the 10 pin, all over the 10 pin. With every shot that he throws, he looks to be growing more and more confident. And as the frames go, and as the game goes, he's feeling like a champion. But you don't want to get ahead of yourself because it only takes one mistake. Leah didn't make two mistakes, but one mistake, one major mistake could give Leah a chance. Leah with a surface change and maybe a much needed surface change as she saw that her reaction was looking different with each shot. 
telling her different stories. And now Leah's hoping to tell a different story herself by opening a different book. A different book being a different, a different surface. A different surface and a different cover stock, a different look, and hopefully a different result. And Leah fell out of that shot. Did not look balanced, almost got away with it. No split, leaving the 4-7. And the four looks to be, well, very offset. And still shaking, the disrespect of the four pin. Get too much for your feet! And Lee adjusted well. No, no need to reset. The pins were offset, and Lee is down. Now Lee is down by a good amount. Assuming that, well, assuming that he strikes, Lee will be down 30 pins. Matthew is certainly not Team Lee. He is Team him. And let's see if he's him on this shot. And he is him on that shot. Like I said before, ever since the adjustment, going into the second frame, he has been solid, he has been consistent. Assuming Matthew wins this game, that's 3-0 which puts Leah in a situation. Either puts her in a situation to, to get swept, which is something I'm sure she does not want, but an opportunity to again make history and have a title defense and walk down of the year at the same time. Seven pin not leaving Leah alone. No. Well, things are, are looking good, though, for the hit squad as regards to their season. They're starting their season out very hot, letting them know that Melody, Melody All Day, Brooklyn All Day, is still around. The hit squad still got hitters. And Lee is one of them right now. The pins not showing her love all over her seven pin. Not likely for her to come back, but like I said, I've seen, I've seen worse things and I've seen stranger things. Matthew certainly not being spooked right now in this Halloween harvest season. He's taking advantage of the opportunity. He is seizing it, carpe diem, and he wants it. Leah going up. Now, unfortunately, Leah has found the pocket, but can't but can't carry. And we're going to see if that's going to continue to to provide a problem for Leah. I know Leah's got to be frustrated about last game having an opportunity to put him away and tying it to I'm sorry, 1-1. One, one, now in a 3-0 situation. Leah only with a potential 185 finish. Matthew is pretty much there already. And Leah just throwing the ball just pretty much to get this one over with and go into the next game with a clear head. And this is where you have to try to trick yourself. This is why you have to tell yourself, even though you're down 3-0, in some ways, it's game one for me. Because if you feel like you're down, and you bowl like you're down, you're gonna stay down. You have to be somewhat stubborn and tell yourself that I'm up, even when I'm not. Matthew up. 
And Matthew right now just stroking the line right now. He knows he has his game, and he's what we call free rolling right now, free of anything, free of any pressure. When there's nothing to stop you, you don't stop. Matthew Gerdhart up. Strokes up the line. And each ball looking like carbon copies of the last ball, a la the second frame. It's looking like there's nothing Leah can do at the moment. I have been in situations where I've seen Leah come back and beat some of the best. And I know she potentially can be the best champion in this division. The opportunity is here for her to make history. But it all starts with a win. She needs to win a game to blaze that trail. She has to win the next game just to pour the gasoline. She has to win the other game to light the match. She has to win the game after that. Look them in the eye put the lipstick on, and then the kiss good night will be her walking Matthew down, provided she can find it. Because right now, Matthew, I don't know, man. Matthew's looking like a champion right now and looking like a threat for anybody who may try to take the belt from him if he can walk out of here with the Cruiserweight Championship. I don't know what K-E-K-A stands for. It could mean kill everything and kick you know what. Because it's looking like he's doing that right now. The man with the acronym is making the situation look grim for Leah right now. At this point, at this point, Leah needs to try anything she has in her bag, get a reaction, maybe take a couple steps on the inside, slow her feet down so that way she can slow her hand down so she can get the reaction she wants. And that was the best looking shot I've seen her throw in a couple of frames. And it's not that she can't throw it like that right now. She's in her head. She's frustrated, understandably so. But she's still a hitter. And again, that seven pin showing back up. <laughs> Leah's in that spot that we all get to as bowlers. You're staying on your line, you're tapping. You don't want to be in a situation where you continue to hit the ball too much and you don't want to hit the ball so much that you go through the face. But if we don't move our feet, and we can all be stubborn and not move our feet, then we will get re mixed reactions. Leah needs to move inside and move where the oil is. If Leah can move where the oil is and get the shape she wants, she has to create a little more shape just to get into the pocket. If, if Leah could create a little more, a little more of a line, and just create a little more shape, get right in that pocket, there's no reason why she can't come back. Matthew is creating a lot of shape on his shot, a lot of good angle. And speaking of shape, this is shaping up to either be a heartbreaking first title defense for Leah Maynor or another, another chance to make history in her first title defense. 
of the UBA Cruiserweight Championship of the Northeast. And Matthew, Matthew still in rhythm, still feeling good, knowing that all he has to do is just stay focused and play his game. He has found a spot that he likes, and he's looking very, dare I say, comfortable. Very comfortable with each shot that he, that he throws up there. There is no pressure on Matthew right now. He is up with a three game cushion. Didn't she throw a frame right here? score is zero, is that right? No, she didn't throw a frame yet. She didn't bully? Mm -mm. And Leah holding on to that outside, but she switched to something that flips a little harder and it's flipping too hard. And because it's flipping so hard, she is not, she is not gonna get to where she needs to be. If she can make if she can make an adjustment off of that first shot, about two boards to the right with her feet, that is the move for Leah. Two boards, in my opinion. In my opinion, two boards inside with her feet. Same exact shot that she just threw, and she can potentially shoot 290. Let's see if she finds and discovers that herself. Leah's trying to collect herself. And pushes that a little, little too hard. Three O Matthew. Leah trying to push that shot a little harder and the ball ended up skidding. She had the reaction that she wants to with that surface. Now she has to adjust to her adjustment. She has to adjust based on the surface that she has chosen. Leah going for the bucket. All right, two spares. Leah right now, definitely trying to think, what can I do to get out of the situation? She's having a major conversation with herself, trying to figure out what, where, who, and when. The easiest answer is the when. The when is now that she has to do something, and the when is now for Matthew to take advantage. Now she has to be asking, when is he going to make a mistake? And if no more, and if no mistakes are made by Matthew, the only other W to think of is win. And this will be a big W, a capital one, for him to take and end a historic, a historic moment like Leah being champion. He wants to be champion himself. And that may be him feeling a little too rushed, a little too amped up. He rushed that shot, and right now, Leah, if she makes the adjustment that I feel she needs to make, which is two boards inside to the right with her feet, because even though the first ball went high, the surface is speaking. She can move with the oil. As long as the oil is where she moves to and she rolls it in there, she will have controllable shots, and right there, a little too much head on that spare. And hopefully, she can sink her teeth into this opportunity. And right now, he wasn't a wood chuck, he was a wood chopper. And she needs to chop down this chop down this 3-0 deficit. Like I said before, this could either be a heartbreaking title defense or another opportunity for her to make history. 
It's all about perspective, and it's all about trajectory. Let's see if the trajectory changes. And right there was the adjustment that Leah needed to, to find the hitter that I know, the hitter that, well, basically is one of the reasons why I limp on the lanes. <laughs> Shout out to all bowlers in UBA. Doesn't matter what you rep, make sure you represent your team along with representatives of other teams for something rather unholy. That'd be unholy alliance. And right there, it felt like a Sunday on that shot because she got blessed with a double. And right there, little Tony Braxton moment, she can breathe again, but she better not breathe in too hard and breathe in too deep. Because sometimes if you breathe too hard, you could choke a little bit. Similar to Matthew's third frame. Matthew, very good at making adjustments. We saw in the last game, more mistake. He doesn't like to be, to be a repeat offender. He moves a little further inside. As like I said, he adjusted. He saw he got a little fast right there. He took a half a board step in, I believe in with his feet move with the oil and he's trying to make sure that he takes advantage well takes advantage of the adjustment that he sees mm. Mm. Matthew oh oh chicken wing leaving leaving a little two four five now, like I mentioned about Leah's spares that she left earlier, they are makeable, yet missable. It, especially in the House of Laurel, where the breakfast is good, but you know what? <laughs> but the, the, the situations ain't always. Let's see if we have a situation here. Hey, ooh. I was gonna say. But see, like I said, it only takes two frames to change your mind frame. Because he, right, he was strutting like flair, and right now he, he got stung. He got stung by his, own, by his own thoughts. And that's two times the left lane bit him. That's two times for lane three. Leah stopping because she knows that she got slow on that one. She hung up on it. She, well, she squeezed it. She squeezed it, and she ripped it, and it ripped through the face. Before she she chopped the spear on the outside. Let's see if Leah can adjust the right way, cover her spears. All she has to do right now is just stay clean. Stay clean just to keep the pressure on Matthew. She cannot she can't even think about the last three games. Those are already in the books. Ball reacts and it sets. Kizzy stay put, and it takes out the 247. Leah with a slight lead going into the sixth frame. The thing about leads, you know what's the thing about leads, Jen? You want to keep them. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. We, we like leads. <laughs> All right. All right, Leah going up, pushing it. And does not get it. As you see Leah stretching herself, trying to get the ball down the lane. Not necessarily trusting, trusting the role. But as long as she holds the lead, she will be just fine. Leah playing a careful game right now because every single shot matters. Not only just score-wise, but for your own, your own mind frame. And we are in the sixth frame. Leah pushes the ball down and all over that seven pin. Mm. Oh, got hard boiled eggs. My mouth was open. <laughs> there you go. 
Jesus. He's going to just come back for the eighth Pause. Well, uh, somebody over here has gas, but, you know, Leah needs to step on the gas for herself. Uh, that wasn't Petro I was smelling. <laughs> Oh, good. Matthew. Matthew with a much-needed strike in the sixth frame. We definitely still have a game here. And you know what? The games have been good. The only game where it looked like one was off to the races was the last game. You know what? You know what? He captured lightning in a bottle. He, captured, he, he caught lightning in a bottle, and he definitely was rolling and stroking that ball. Very well. Ooh. Bucket of chicken. He forgot his biscuit. Hey, order. <laughs> well, shoot. He left a bucket of chicken. This could spell deep fried disaster for Matthew right now. Oh, let's see if he likes hot sauce. And yes, he does. He likes hot sauce, honey on the biscuit, everything. Takes care of it. No. Hey, no open, no problem. He made the bucket. He certainly didn't kick it. Leah maintains her lead. If Leah strikes, she maintains a 10-pin lead. Make that 19-point lead. You see what happens? When, when he gives, when he gives, he gives it right back. I guess that's I guess that's how you say it. I guess that's how you say it. Uh, and oh, pin count is very, very important when you're both sparing. Leah with the eight count, leaving double wood. Double wood. It, it has to be good. There's no. She's got no other option right now. She wants to keep her lead. It's not a split. Hopefully, it will not be a problem. Both bowlers leaving things that are very makeable yet missable. Leah, going up and I. <laughs> I keep holding my breath every single time she shoots a double wood. That's exactly how she made it before. Playing that, playing that thin line of chopping and avoiding deflection. Pro shot. He needs equipment drill. I'm getting tired of this shit. Shout out to the welterweight bowlers and shout out to the welterweight crowd. And Leah going up. And there we go, tickling it. Now Leah has thrown the first strike in a couple frames out of both opponents. Nobody has thrown nobody has thrown a double with the exception of Matthew in the first frame. Ever since then, that double has meant nothing because the situation is this. Leah has has a lead. She wants to keep the lead. Oh. Uh -huh. That has got to hurt. Great shot. Got everything he wanted except for one. The eight pins standing up. A stone eight. Yeah, a Snoop 8. Where's Khalifa? That, that 8 was stone. It was stone. That's good. Throw it with your fingers. There you go. And all over that, Leah, has a, Leah's, Leah had us a strike. And then she throws a double. That's a bigger foot on the net. She needs to channel her New York. She needs to channel her Brooklyn. Put the Timberland on and step on his neck and stay on his neck. Matthew up, 
moves a little more inside. And and I was gonna say exactly great, you know, great assessment by by Miss Syndicate herself, Jen Schwartz, my man. He worked at Staples. He was working at Staples. He punched a hole, man. He was office products on that one. Now this is difficult yet makeable. I know because I made it last night. And ooh, and, and you know what? Like I said, he kicked the three. He, he needed to take out the six. He took out the three, six, and the seven, but left the four. Leah at this point just basically has to throw it like it's a no-tap tournament. Just get to the pocket. Just keep on cooking. You ain't got to season it too much. And Leah gets all the way up with her arm there. And that right, yeah, yeah. Looking like Statue of Liberty on that one. She put the torch all the way up, exaggerated that lift, and got herself a gift. The gift being her first game won as the first women's cruiserweight champion. She's got to be feeling a little bit of, a little bit better. You don't want to get, well, you never want to get swept in any situation. You never want to get swept on your first title defense. Also speaking from experience. And all the way up. That's all right. Push that ball far. She didn't want to leave a split. And she's been causing, giving us a lot of suspense with all of her, her double woods. Now, the game is locked out. She's won it. So we'll probably see a little more relaxed version of her double wood attempts. A yo. Anyway. Leah shooting at her double wood and showing us a little trick shot, taking out the back pin. Push that one a little hard. 187 finish will be for, for, for Matthew. 196 finish for Leah. Leah winning game four. And yes, she does have some more to go. Could be blazing yet another trail for a walk down victory from being down 0-3 in your very first def uh, title defense as, well, the first woman's champion. You know, and it's and it's amazing. It's definitely amazing. Oh Jesus! All right, I'm so. You wanna do this? You wanna be you in three? I'm so. Matthew definitely um, nice and relaxed for three games. <laughs> Not relaxed now, because now you got that little, little little bit of doubt that can creep inside your head when you give away a game after winning three. Well, he could, well, his name may be Matthew. Yeah, his, his name may be Matthew, but right now his name might be Ron. Osley, that is, because he can hear footsteps in the dark. Going into game five here. UBA Northeast Cruiserweight Championship title defense of Leah Maynard against Matthew Gerdhart. The Hit Squad versus KEKA. Great shot to start. Leah leaving the seven pin. Again, keeping the house clean is the best strategy. 
you, you don't know if your partner's going to throw a lot of strikes. You just want to throw good shots. You can't worry about score if you're not throwing it well. And if you're not throwing it well, you're not going to score. Leah up. No problem on her seven pin. For the most part, she's been shooting her seven pins very well. Matthew going up. Matthew right now focus on throwing his next shot, which is, well, his first shot, his first shot of game five. And right now he is certainly stroking. But that was the situation before last game where he stroked for the first two frames. And then after that, the whole game changed. Matthew up, and Matthew is getting a little more aggressive now, getting that ball down the lane and pushing it. Leah's, Leah's focus on getting that ball down the lane. You got to get it down the lane, that's all. And right there, Leah with two shots in the pocket. First one did not carry, but she co converted her seven pin. That one definitely carried. Leah trying to carry herself to her first title defense victory. And man, what a tough one it is for your first one ever. Leah taking her, taking her time, staying composed. That's got to hurry. All right. Seven count right there. Leaving what, what, what is the lefty version of the 2 4 5. So we got the three, five, six. I'm sorry. I make stink, but I get the idea. Leah, unfortunately, with a, with a, with a mistake. Man, Leah right now, I know is kicking herself after that mistake. Definitely did not want to do that. That ball double bounced, double dribble, but no violation. No call on that. Don't turn, that, that was not a turnover, no. And then Matthew right there. Oh, oh, FaceTime for Matthew. So Matthew throwing the ball very well. Always seems to have one shot that'll, over, that'll overreact. Cannot take anything away from Matthew. Matthew is throwing a great ball. It's just sometimes it catches a little bit of that over-under reaction, that little random flip. 
And that ball has to flip if he's going to convert that. And almost gets it. Close, but no cigar. So Leah did make a mistake, and she did have an open. She did chop her spare. And what Leah needs to do right now is to forget that. And she needs to get back on her job. And that's got a hook. And it definitely hooks. Leah getting to the pocket, leaving the seven pin. Let's see if Leah could just focus on getting that ball all the way up and push that ball all the way there. And Leah gets the ball down the lane and all over her seven pins, so she covers that. Matthew with three in a row and an open frame. 8 1. Chopping a split. Or not, or not making a split, rather. Leah chopping her spear in, in the third frame, making her seven pin. Trying to keep herself alive in this contest. And Leah has got to hurry and tickles the pocket. And we still have a game. Similar to last game. Mistakes were made. Opportunities were given. Leah kept the pressure on. Once she got a little bit ahead of him in the race, she kept her foot on the gas and didn't worry about, <laughs> didn't worry about any potential stoppages. Because she didn't want to stop. You can't stop. And that ball goes a little high, almost leaves a 4 9, leaving a 4 pin. What we're seeing potentially is a mix of him wanting to put the game away and getting a little too aggressive and not as relaxed as he was before in that, in that game three victory. Matthew rolling the ball up. Covers a four pin, no problem. Yo, speaking of not throwing a double, ever since the first two frames similar to the last game, there has been no doubles ever since the first two frames for for Matthew Gerhardt. And like I said, similar to last game, chosen words by one of the chosen ones about a certain bowler not being able to throw doubles. Matthew has not been able to throw one after the first two frames since the last game. Feel the rhythm! Feel the rhyme! <laughs> Matthew, after his triple in the, in the first three frames, has not been able to, to string them together. And Leah, to her credit, staying on task, watching that and staying the course. A lot of exciting action right now. So tug of war to see who's going to get it. And Leah pushes the ball up. That ball's got a hook. And that double wood again. Like 
Leonisa. Leah needs to make this. I don't know how Leah does that. It looks like it's going to go way, way away, and it stays right there. Leah, Leah's down, but Leah's definitely not out. What did I just say? What did I just say? There it is, there it is, there it is. What did I just say? I made you mangy. I made you mangy. Because he knew he ain't shit. Yeah, forget the last frame, man. It's three in a row. That's the last frame, forget it. Three in a row. <laughs> Leah up on lane three. All right, that ball's got a hit. And she wanted that one. You could tell. She sunk her teeth into that shot. Exciting situation that we have here. It could be heartbreak or history. Either way. We got it here on Caffeine TV. Uh, game game one and match one. I'm sorry, match one and what we consider a double dose of caffeine for all the bowlers and all the people who view in this. And Matthew hitting the strike, keeping his lead over Leah. Leah did win a game. Leah would like to win three more. Matthew would like for that to not happen. And he would like to win this game and take the championship and end the historic title run. Hell, oh, and totally out of trouble. Which what looked to be a, a big four is an eight count, very makeable. But remember, all spares are, are makeable as much as they're missable. He makes this, he keeps a lead. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, you, you got lucky. He got lucky. No problem on that. Takes that. care of the four seven, no problem. He don't like turkey, so I didn't want it. Yeah, he like chicken. He don't like turkey. And 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 he caught he caught that motherfucker chicken. He's a vegetarian. He don't like turkey. No, 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 no. He don't like turkey. He likes to duck it. Okay. Hey, hey, oh, oh, whoa! Leave the duck it out of this. No, no, he likes turkey. No, you don't no, need You're not in it. He's a turkey, a chicken, and a duck at the same time. I don't Leo, looking to throw a very, very, very important double. A necessary double. That ball's got a hit. And that is a big double. Leo. Keeping herself in this game. Win, lose, or draw, you're going to know you've been in a fight with Leah. Leah looking to get. Well, strike number three to get three in a row in the foundation frame, the ninth frame of game number five. That ball's got to hurry. It's got to hit. And trips out everything. A dirty shot by a cleanup woman who was trying to clean up on this opportunity to make history. Again. Like I'm tired of being isolated. Everybody yeah, knowing the real UBA champion. No. I can be any heavyweight, cruiserweight, or whatever. So, 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 oh, yo, yo, you saying it's real? 
Yes, indeed. You know, you know the name. You know the Israel's in the building. Uh -huh. This guy, I could have got him out there in four, but that's my buddy. So I didn't want to embarrass my boy. <laughs> but he was talking shit. So I'm going to whoop his behind. Well, you know what? Well, 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 I, I mean, he said, he said behind. And speaking of behind right now, he's trying to come back from behind. Okay, I got you. I my man, appreciate Shout out to Alfonso Israel Rhodes. Uh, one of the bowlers of the welterweight division. One of the most entertaining divisions you will ever find. Like I said, foundation bowling at its best. Getting it from the mud, from the ground up. Slashes and dashes, but sometimes a little X's too. Speaking of X, Matthew Gerhardt with an X in the foundation frame, ninth frame. He needs to strike. He needs to fight back. He needs to come back. And whoa. Civil right seven pin standing up for its rights on the left. Potential 203 finish, assuming a spare and a strike is to be had here. All over his seven pin. He's definitely disappointed in that leave. He would have liked to put a double. He would have liked to make her work a little harder for it. Leah with an opportunity to cut it down from 3-1 to 3-2 and creep a little bit more in the in the mind and the thoughts. And, ooh, San Francisco 49ers show up. The 4-9 split right there. And not bad in the sense you don't have to go for it, but bad in the sense you would have liked that, those other two pins because anything could happen. If Leah, Leah takes her time, and pushes that ball and just gets the ball to the drop zone, to the break point. She could break the chain of losses in the first three games. What's going on, brother? How you doing, my brother? You know, all is good, you know. Can't complain. I'm happy to see you. You know, looking at Leah and uh Exactly. And looking at Leah trying to make history for the second time as she gets the ball down. That's got a hook. And and right there, Leah right there sending a message saying, I'm still here. I know Leah from Brooklyn. She whipped my behind a couple times. Oh, really? oh yeah. Well, I mean that's, that's Brooklyn all day. No, no. She was down 3 0, now it's 3 2. If I was in oh, it, oh, coming back there. Yes. Okay. A chance, like I said, second time in case of your first title defense come down from potentially, because you know I'm objective. Yeah. You have to. I promise, I promise you're two in a but row. potentially come down and come, and come up from a dark night like hole. She was in the prison of her mind, and now with each shot, she continues to make, bail, and keep hitting, and that's okay. That is okay. Kicking that back foot out, little two-step. She got her drink and a two-step, and that drink will be caffeine. <laughs> Maybe with a little boost. Who knows? Who won? I got a bet he don't throw three in a row. I got a dollar say he don't throw three in a row. Extra crispy right here. Oh! Why didn't anybody oh! take it? Why didn't any of your teammates take it? Because y'all knew. Y'all knew he was going to do that. Ducky, ducky. And Leah. And Leah right now with an opportunity again to continue to make history. We got two stories here. The story for Leah is I can do this. I have a shot. The story for Matthew is I have it. It's right there. Why can't I grab it? This is a story of being at the top of the ladder, potentially reaching up, grabbing a brass ring, and then you getting tripped up on one of the rungs. Leah's climbing faster and faster. And before you know it, 
Forget the rear view. Soon she'll be in her in the clear view. Oh my, you can't not get paid today. Nine is a hundred seven dollars a game. And we are going into game number six. And now, like I said, the Isley effect. When you start hearing footsteps in the dark, as the room gets a little dim and the situation then becomes grim. Matthew needs to stay focused. He has the opportunity to become champion, but he has to get it. Gets the ball down the lane, no chop. Takes out the 6'10". And now, and now when the scales of the mind, the balance of confidence has shifted slightly. Leah getting the ball up. It gets there just enough to get all 10. And like I said, it's amazing how the mind works. Looking at the scale, if you could see a pendulum, the pendulum is shifting in the direction of the current cruiserweight champion of the Northeast. Certainly being a pioneer, just like how UBA is the pioneer of team bowling. And if speaking of team bowling, if you want to get a team together, unholy squads are still available for all Northeast Unholy Alliance events. Men's unholy, as well as women's unholy, Oh, and that was unholy carry right there. Like I was saying before, men's Northeast unholy as well as women's Northeast unholy, November 4th at Majestic Lanes. And then the traditional unholy alliance happening at AMF East Meadow in Long Island, New York. Majestic Lanes in New Jersey is the men's and the women's on November 4th. And following that, Unholy Alliance, East Meadow. This is 3-2 th right now. We're in game six. Matthew covering a spear on the first frame. Getting that strike on the second frame. Matthew getting settled in. Little double dribble. And San Francisco 49ers make another appearance. And it seems like the cold wind is blowing in the direction of Matthew. He's getting he's getting oh so cold. He has a he has an ice box where his opportunity used to be. And now, Matthew is now getting thoughts creeping into his head. That little bit of doubt. We all watch sports. We've seen teams be up, and then all it takes is a bad quarter, or sometimes a bad possession, to then change and shift not only the mood, but also change the conversation. To quote the late, great Rowdy Roddy Piper, when you think you have all the answers, I start to change all the questions. And now the question for Matthew is, what do I need to do to get back and take what I have right there? Keeps her feet behind the line. Amazing balance. Amazing balance. That's what we call sticking the landing. <laughs> Very appropriate that Matthew has has a camouflage pattern because he's definitely in a war with a fighter right now. Speaking of fighters, knowing that this is the month of October, uh, shout out to all the people who, are, who have dealt with or are dealing with cancer. Make sure you're wearing your pink jerseys and, and, and support that. And speaking of support, I know Leah right now has a lot of support from her teammates watching from the hit squad. Okay. 
She already pulled a hat trick with three strikes. And, oh, my goodness, kicking out the six. Sake Carey kicks out the six pin. And Leah did a thing. It is the harvest season, and it's Thanksgiving season coming up soon. And she put the, the, the meat shank on. Uh, the bone of the ham. Four in a row. And Matthew needs to go. He needs to go hard. Gerd Hart still needs to go hard and finish it. But right now, the 10 pin right now, well, be, being very defiant, a very defiant 10 pin. And like I said, the conversation has changed. The questions have changed. And I got a question for Alfonso. As we watch Matthew shoot his 10 pin, and he's all over it. Yeah, we do have a close game, you know, and, you know, shout out to you right now on the welterweight list, you know, doing your thing. Thank and you. and I know I know that the campaign is for you to be one of the chosen ones to be on Caffeine TV, right? Exactly. I need to be on Caffeine TV. Oh, bring me an audience because Shady know a billion people. Exactly. Five million six in the house, you know what I'm saying? Former director, state director, all that good stuff. Right. Got my little school kids and filled up. We'll be watching on Caffeine TV also. So all I got right. to keep, keep the language and all that stuff yeah, cool. You know, like Matthew needs some caffeine right now because he's sleeping on the job because he, he could have finished his job. Yeah. And, he, and, and Leah's a bad person to not, not be sleeping on the job with. Exactly. Because she's streaky, real streaky. She and, hit or miss. You, and you know. Nobody strikes like her. It, it, I think of this math problem. What does it go? The more you mess around. You got, the more you find out, right? The, the more you find out, yeah. The more you mess around, the more you find out. You don't find the hard way. So That's right. Leads, you got a stake in some Exactly. Stuff, exactly. And you know what? Hey, there you go. You know, it don't get no realer than that. Shout Leah still owe me money. She bet on Sheena. So she still owe me money. <laughs> well, you know, well, you doing the thing in the welterweight list. Hopefully we'll see you up there soon, you know, with, with a little extra weight on you. That would be the welterweight championship. I get my, this girl, this lady right here. Oh, oh the, the boss lady. She beat me three times. Last match of the class is seven gamers. She threw last six to catch me. Uh. And then, speaking of bosses, like a boss, five in a row. Can you say that again? And see, and this is when you know something's real in the air, because I said when she was down 3-0, it's either going to be a heartbreak or history, because you can either lose or you can make history again, and in your first title defense as the first female Cruiserweight champion, get one of the, I want to say, first 3-0 walkdowns that we've seen in a while on Caffeine TV. Yes. yes. She's, she's zoning right now. And right now. It's like she took five espresso shots with each shot that she threw up there. Did she? Well, it looked like it because oh, you know what? She, she she hitting the ground running fast. She 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 she's she doing it all day the Brooklyn way. She is she is from Brooklyn. There you go, Cinnabons right now. In a, oh, Cinnabons getting out of a sticky situation. Shout out to everybody watching us for this match, uh, part one in our double dose of caffeine today on Caffeine TV. If you just joined us, uh, let me give you a little, um, a little summary of what's been going on. Leah Maynor, first female cruiserweight champion of, of, any, of any region, whether northeast or southeast. Down, down three games, I'm oh, sorry, zero to three. Potentially forcing a game seven and potentially a walk down and she's on a 278 pace. Matthew certainly is not on that. Speaking of pace, Leah's finding her pace right now. Now she's looking a little more comfortable with each shot. She might have got too comfortable on the last shot, but rather forgiving were the pins on lane three on that shot. Matthew catching a little reaction, and, if, and we didn't. We didn't talk about this before as he leaves that 10 pin. The story is always that lefties have an advantage over righties because, oh, the lane doesn't change. There's no excuse. The playing field is even here. There is one lefty, there is one righty. 
both have the same fight. They only can get in each other's way with each shot. Leah was getting in her, in her way earlier, and that is the first 10 pin miss I saw Matthew leave. And right now, it looks like we're going to be seeing a game seven, provided that all things stay the way they are looking. Perception is reality, and I perceive that we are going to see a game seven. Like I said, two L's can make a W if you put them together and adjust the angle. And he tries to adjust the angle, leaves a 2-4-5, pushing that ball out of frustration. Maybe it's an area check. And this is where you have to remember, marathon, not sprint. If you know you're down and you know you have another game to go and you have an opportunity to put it away, especially if you see your opponent is way ahead, take this opportunity. Test some things out, area check. Am I doing the same thing with my hand? Am I pushing the ball too much? What am I doing wrong? And what do I need to do to flip that wrong and make it right? Because right now, Matthew is struggling on the right side of the lane. No strikers advantage here. Both, both bowlers, like I said, had one battle, and that is their own side. There was no defense in this match. It's all offense. Leah looking very settled. Cinnabon's up. Cinnabon's looks very smooth on that shot. Road to 278 looking great. And road to game seven looking like heaven for one and hell for the other. Win, lose, or draw. Leah can say that she didn't lay down for nobody. And even though her name is Cinnabons, don't get it twisted. She ain't sweet. Matthew, putting this match away, can say that he was in a historic bout, came out on top. The win-win for any viewer is that you got to witness it. <laughs> Leah getting settled. Shoulders nice and square. Getting right through that ball. Almost looking like a junior again on each shot. <laughs> Has a little staring contest with the 10 pin and well, she wins. Matthew Gerdhardt still still fighting. And right now it's a little hard for him to figure out where he went wrong because now he's getting all kinds of reactions. And I noticed that I haven't really seen him attempt anything dull. And his battle is this. And just like I was making mention before, when it's a lefty versus a righty, it's, it's a fair fight. The only one thing you could do is get in your own way. Leah got in her way earlier, catching a lot of over-under reactions. And now he's moving inside, and now he's getting skid, flip, and sometimes all skid, no flip, and look like maybe flipping no skid. And that was skid with no flip. And, well, he's not really putting his fingers in the ball. And, I, and being in this situation, the best thing to do is go through the bag, see what you got, get an area check. You want to see what's going to work because now – it's win or go home. It's not even playoff season, but we got, we got a game seven. Before any major sport team is able to give you a game seven, you're getting your game sevens here with the UBA all day on Caffeine TV. Baby. All right. And he finally gets a strike. Even though his face is a little red right now, it, it, she's choking the life out of him. So it seems like he got a blue face. Baby. And speaking of said individual, let's see if she continue to bust down on Matthew.
Leah doing a good job getting the ball up the lane. Ooh. And wait a minute. If I'm correct, we could see uh, your stretch of the day. Potential 278 finish for Leah Maynard. And potential, dare I say, 169 finish for Matthew. Can we get a classic UBA stretchy? Stretchy. Speaking of stretch, a lot of people looking earlier on said it would have been a, a, a big stretch for Leah to come out of this victorious. And fast forward, oh, well, I jinxed the stretchy. But fast forward, right now, the stretch now is definitely not so much there for Leah, but now for Matthew. Because Matthew is looking like his punches can't phase Leah. But he needs to maybe adjust his himself take a walk, take a breather, and he needs to find something in order to, well, take what he already set up. He turned the oven on, he started cooking the food, but now he can't even eat it, and the plate's getting cold for Matthew right now. Leah all over her eight pin. Strike gives Leah 267. And Matthew has to throw the first strike, but he needs a double to not get stretched. <laughs> Leah's definitely got to feel better, much, much better, after her first three games where she, well, in her words, choked and gave up the games. I'm sorry, 257. So, to have the opportunity to not be stretched, Matthew must throw the first shot. He has to throw the first strike. And Matthew up. First shot to not get stretched. And he's fighting. He said, I see pride, I see power. And I see myself not getting stretched. We almost had our first traditional UBA stretchy. We almost had a stretch. I mean, it could still be. He can go face. He could, you know, he could. But we're objective. No. We're just talking about, we're just telling you what could he, happen. He just had, mm. He said, I will not. Yeah, yeah. He said, I'll reject that out of hand. I, I was going to sit there and, and utilize his team name, but I have to be PG because I'm in a red shirt, so let's not get me in oh, trouble. So, so his team name, so I, I thought it was kick, I thought it was Kill Everything and Kick. No, no, no. K-E-K-A? No, 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 no it's Kick Ass Eat Ass. Hey, everybody's got their own diet. <laughs> And hopefully, and hopefully, you're digesting this match here on Caffeine TV. Exactly. That's, the, that's, what, the, that's what the jersey name is. That's, is, that's what it says. Kick-Ass Eat-Ass. All right. So it's that's Kia. Why, that's why they go like this. Two in the bank, one in the stink. That's their thing. Hey! Education. The more you know. <laughs> the more you know on Caffeine TV. Told you, dude. And you know that. <laughs> and know this, Leah right now on the brink of history. First title defense, first ever female cruiserweight champion, first walk down we've seen in a long time. Walk down victory, potentially. Potentially for Leah. As we are here in game seven here at Laurel Lanes in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. Shout out to all the, all the bowlers in New York, Jersey, Philly, all over, all over the world. You could be anywhere in the world, but hopefully you're here with us. And someone who's still here 
is Liam Maynard of the Hit Squad. And K-A-E-A, -E sorry for butchering the team name earlier. Uh, Professor um, Ducky definitely educated me on the name. And he's going to have to, well, at least do the first part of what the acronym <laughs> of the acronym is in order to fight back. The second part, that's on his own time. <laughs> but channeling his team's name, he needs to have his cake and eat it too if he wants to move forward and call himself the Cruiserweight Champion of the Northeast. And no, oh! And if we, if we, it's looking like, it's looking like a situation. That's crazy. You know, sometimes, sometimes you just feel like the pins are against you. Because I don't understand what I just saw. Well, at least it wasn't a split. That's the only good thing I can say about it. It wasn't a split. No split, no trouble. Yeah. Well, this, well, there's no timeouts in bowling, but situations like this can give you a chance to definitely collect yourself, collect your thoughts, slow yourself down. Sometimes you have to be slowed down slow down by a situation just to make sure that everything's good. Matthew Gerdhard of K-A-E-A. -E and similar to E-A, he is still in the game and he needs to get all in the game. Matthew Gerdhard. We'll just say kick all and eat all. And he eats all 10 pins there, making the seven pin fall off of the lanes and fall back and lean back. Going into the second frame of a historic game seven of Leah Maynor, Matthew Gerdhart. Leah channeling, well, channeling Matthew's jersey's name. And she started to crank it up. And she came back with a beautiful 257 game, giving herself the confidence that she, def that she definitely needed. Gets that ball in the oil, rolls it in the oil, starts to play. Now is when you have to tell yourself, win, lose, or draw. I know I fought, and I can go out knowing that I did my thing. Now the pressure is off, well, a little off of Leah now, and a little on Matthew. Because now, there's two things. It's the confidence of knowing I just won three games after being down three games. And then the pressure on your head of being the one that won the three games and then lost the three games. Because the old adage is, it ain't how you start, it's how you finish. That ball needs to finish. That ball finishes a little high. Does not split. Leaves the six pin. No split, no trouble. Leah trying to keep herself loose, trying to keep the back stretched out. Seven games is a lot, especially when you got when you got someone else trying to take what you got. All right, 
Leah stroking the ball, and no problem on that six pin. We still have a nice crowd here, Mount Laurel, New Jersey, Laurel Lanes. Shout out to this facility uh, for, for being our arena. And shout out to all those viewers right now, all the viewers right now checking this out live on Caffeine TV, checking out, checking out a historic match right here. Double dribble, let's see if it's a violation. It is not a violation. He gets a double. So spare and a double. Potential 290 finish for, for Matthew Gerhardt. Potential 270 finish, Leah Maynor. Matthew looking to put this to bed because he he is no he knows. He knows that he definitely messed up by letting those other games go. And he got that ball out very wide. And let's just see if he can make the baby. Baby split leave. Two seven. Let's see, and nope, prophylactic, protection. Oh, he obviously was not, was not trying to have any kids on that shot right there. We call that the uh, pullout situation, and let's see if um, Leah could jump in and go in. Leah gets out the ball. That ball's got to carry, and it does carry. Similar, similar ball reaction she got to to the last shot. Got to be very careful, though. Two high hits. When your ball talks, you have to listen. The ball is trying to tell her something. But if she's on top of what she sees, she has a better, she has a better view than I do. Cinnabons right now. Leah Maynor, a.k.a. Cinnabons. It would certainly be a treat for her if she can, well, cash in on this lovely opportunity right here. And let's see if she cashes in right now. Frame number five. And, ooh, frame five responds with a double of her own. And clean frames for five frames straight. Matthew had a hiccup. The fourth frame wasn't open. Matthew Gerdhard looking to carry, and he does not carry. Ten again, the ten pin standing up, fighting. So now... Which, what, what was, was two, well, it was a two-on-one before. It was a two-on-one match before with Leah and her own mind against her, as well as Matthew. And now, what was once her enemy is now her, her ally. Matthew now being his own predecessor. And Matthew feeling extremely philanthropic giving back three consecutive games, and it's looking like potentially four games in a row that he has given back. Leah paid, but now she's getting way more change than she expected. Beautiful shot there by Matthew, looking to hopefully turn the situation around. Strikes in the sixth frame. Has an opportunity to come back. Potential 233 finish. 
considering Matthew strikes out. Leah on the road to 270, provided that she strikes out. It's never over until it's over, so both individuals need to stay the course, stay in the game, because anything can happen with Leah's shots and anything can happen with Matthew's shots. Right now, Leah's looking pretty solid right now. Solid as a rock, as a matter of fact. Matthew, he needs to get there. Gerd Hard needs to, well, st stay focused. <laughs> Didn't finish that one. Leah taking her time, definitely stretching, making sure the back stays loose. It might sound crazy, but Matthew has to not look at the screen and only look within himself. And he has to let he has to let the universe decide what happens with Leah's shot. But right now, Leah's won with her universe. And, and right now, strikes revolve around her. She is loving each shot she's throwing, as she should. Matthew right now. He's fighting himself. He needs to at least make Leah think about it. Matthew gets the ball up. That's looking good. And merciful carry in Mount Laurel. Matthew with a much needed double. He cannot afford to leave anything. No matter what he's doing right now, he's still going to be in the rear view but at least he won't be far behind considering that he strikes out for his potential 233. Leah on the road to 270. <clears throat> Matthew searching and searching. What will he find? And Matthew's trying to fight. He's, a, he's at least trying to make Leah think about it. He's trying to force her to continue to run. Leah throwing the ball spicy like mustard. Meanwhile, Matthew is, well, he's trying to catch up. All right, step by step, frame by frame. Let's see if we still got a 270 game. And we could still have a 270 game to cap off a game seven victory, potentially, which would be heavenly. The more sevens, well, they represent heaven. And let's see if Leah can go on that golden brick road and take home her prize, baby that she earned. And as a former Cruiserweight champion, I'm proud to be calling this match. I may have had a great record, but I, I have yet to have a walk, a walk down victory to this magnitude. Doesn't matter what division you are, heavyweight, welterweight, Vixens, you have to be just, you, you, should, you should just be excited to watch this right now. This is a, such a beautiful situation. Leah getting emotional with each shot, as she should. She worked hard for this. Leah, Leah still, though, has to keep her emotions in check. She has one more frame to go. All she has to do is just stay focused. And eight count right there. And you have just watched history. Caffeine TV, first time walk down victory, first walk down, first title defense, first and only at the moment.
Cruiserweight champion Leah Maynard. Not knowing if she should be here right now. Upset at herself of the three games. Looked inside herself. And she grinded. She came back. Yeah. It all turned around. Yep. You know, and and you know what? Shout out to the Vixens and the women. When they talk right there, yeah. never lost again. And you know what? Shout out to the women having each other's back. Not taking anything away from Matthew. Matthew was a part of history. Unfortunately, the wrong end. He bowled, he bowled beautifully. He put the pressure on Leah. He made Leah show up. And, he made her do the back four. And you know what? Leah basically, she earned this victory. Matthew earned the opportunity. Leah earned the victory. We all got to witness something that was a treat. It's nothing like dessert to go with your caffeine. Matthew, you know, throwing a shot, all but over. All Leah has to do is just, keep well, just keep it on the lane. Like I said before, very emotional as she should be. Another accomplishment for for a great bowler. And no matter what division you're in, welterweight, heavyweight, tag team, vixens, this is just another another dose of historic. Historic TV that we're providing to you. An embrace, classy display of respect by Matthew Gerdhardt of KAEA. Losing four games to three to the reigning, defending, undisputed first ever female cruiserweight champion. And let's see. If Cinnabons right now can put icing on this game with two more strikes to cap off an amazing, an amazing first title match. Hey, yeah, this is Sean I face in the voice of choice, and I'm standing here with Matthew Gerhardt, KAEA. You were a part of history. Unfortunately, it was the wrong end. Um, you earned the opportunity. She earned the victory. Yep. You both earned something here yep. today, and you earned each other's respect. Um, what do you have to say about this match today? Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, she's a, she's a good bowler, and obviously, game I went up 3-0, and she found a line, and they dried up, and she 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 played the lanes good. She's a champ for a reason, so exactly. I'll be back and we'll see what happens next time. That's hey, all I can do. Hey, it was great you watching y'all both. Hey, learn and we, we go, you know? Hey, you know, me being a former two-time Cruiserweight champion, I shout out to you, to y'all. You know, y'all definitely came here and showed us what the Cruiserweight division is all about. Yeah, definitely. You know? She battled, so you know, we give it up for her. She, she, she did it and she, she walked me down and that's... that's I'm gonna give it up for her. I'll That's see her. Right. I'll see her again. I, I'm 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 good for the battle. I like battle. So we'll see what happens next time. Indeed. Thank you for your time, brother. This is uh, Sean Dye Facing, a.k.a. the voice of choice right here, standing with the historic and still reigning defending UBA Cruiserweight Champion of the Northeast, Leah, Hit Squad. How are you feeling right now? Uh, I'm in a lot of pain right now. Um, I thought that my grandmother pushed me, even though I went down the first three, I gave him at least one game. I choked. Um, Matt is probably the hardest opponent on the list, so I knew I had to, I knew I had to show up. And even though I was three down, 
I didn't stop trying. Um, I just found out yesterday my grandmother is going into hospice, so my mind wasn't right. Uh, my back started killing me. Um, I'm not good at this. <laughs> I just want to thank everyone who cheered for me, and like I said, Matt's probably the hardest opponent on the list, and he beat me before, so it was my mission to try and beat him. Um, even though, like I said, I was three down, I, I didn't want to stop trying. Uh, is nothing else I could say. This is for my grandmother. Cancer sucks. That's why I wore this jersey today. So this is for her. And now it gets a picture that I wanted with her with the belt. That was my goal. So I don't care if I lose every match after this. Now that I still have the belt, I get to have that picture with her. That's all that matters to me. Well, definitely. And you, you know, and um, prayers up. Um, for your grandmother, I know what it's like to have that on your Mary while bowling. You know, she never got a chance to see me with my championship. I'm just glad I got my 300 before so she could see it. And and we saw you today representing what I know about you and being a fighter. You're hard-headed. I know and I got the scars. I got the scars to prove it. And But it's always been a pleasure to be on the lanes with you. I was talking to Matt earlier before the match. I think some people had the wrong impression of me. When I bowl, I'm very serious, and it's for me. It's not towards anyone else. And um, I I don't mean to, like, make it so harsh or being a bitch or an asshole or whatever. But it's for me because I, I struggled a lot. I had back issues. I'm not the bowler I used to be. So now that I... I'm starting to come back into bowling. When I run out of shot or slap out of shot, it's for me. It's not towards anybody. I've never been like that. And people that know me know that that's not me. When I do that, it's for me because I feel good. Oh, I, I threw a good shot or whatever. And that's what I was trying to explain to Matt before the match. And I know that I'm new to PA and a lot of people don't know me or know, knew me before. I never, I, I've always been humble and I've always, um, I never was one to talk shit unless someone said shit to me. Then I, I will be with a quick second to go back at you. Mm -hmm. But um, like I said, Matt is probably the hardest match in our whole division. Um, so he beat me before and it was my goal to try and win and beat him and get back at him. Not maliciously, but for me, that was my goal. And that was my intent, that was my goal, that was my, my push for me. Yes. Um, I went down three today, I drilled a new ball, I had a lot of hard time. Mm -hmm. I had a hard time carrying lately, and I drilled a new ball, and I started off with that ball, and I just wasn't used to it, and I made the wrong decision to start off with it. Yeah. That's why I went back to what I knew, mm -hmm. what I knew my ball was going to do. And if so, I can make, if I can, uh, make mention to that, um, I noticed that, well, being that you're on the left, he's on the right, it was a, it was a fair fight all the way. Only people that was getting in your own ways was your own tracks. So, yeah. you, know, I, I, you know, and you making a lot of decisions with your surfaces is what got you here. I was, um, I was anxious. I mean, I work overnight, so I've been up since yesterday, like yeah. 8, 9 p.m., um, I'm not trying to make that an excuse, but um, I believe he works overnights as well. Yeah. So I understand. He understands my, like, a lot of times these matches, I don't, people don't understand overnight. Mm -hmm. You you lack of sleep a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So um, when he messaged me, he said, it's going to be more like one, maybe a little after. I just got off work, blah, blah, blah. And I said, no problem. I understand. I'm, I'm, first of all, I never and ever going to take a win on forfeit. Not that it would have even come close to that today, but I like Matt. 
um, there's been words said, and I spoke to him before the match today, and I was like, I heard you were talking shit about me, whatever. I don't know if it was some people trying to, like, um, get in my head or talk shit in general or whatever. He was like, no. He's like, he did say I had a bad attitude at bowling, but I think he had the wrong perception, um, perception of me because I'm not like that. I will always give give you five. I will always, you know, clap my hand for you, give my hand out for you. Um, I think a lot of people, like, in this area have the wrong perception of me. Um, when I do that, which I never actually really used to do, but it's for me. Because I know I used to be better than what I am now. And now that I'm, like, starting to get back on track of myself, that's what I do to make myself feel better. I'm like, all right, Lee, you do a good shot there. Or... All right, Lee, you executed, you need to make a shot, whether you carried, make, what, bullshit shot, good shot, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. That's what I felt like, um, you know, I've been drinking, so I'm probably talking in circles right now. I don't worry about that, but you know but what? Hey, if I, if I could just I'm, I'm really, I'm really not the person some people think I am, mm -hmm. cocky, whatever, I'm really not. I will always give anybody props. And even when you get a lucky shot on me, I will always give you five. Because mm. you know what? I get lucky shots too. Okay. It makes up for the seven pins for me. It makes up for the ten pins for a righty. Right? That's right. So You're exactly right. It, it is what it is. And everyone gets those shots sometimes. So, But I was, I'm, I'm really happy today that I came back after being down three. It was a letdown. I was getting in my head, I was thinking too much, I was whatever, and I was just like, you know what, just try to do me. Just try to keep fighting, and that's what I did. Mm -hmm. And this time it worked out. Sometimes it don't always work out. So. Can I say thank you? I want to say thank you, because for, for allowing us to, to witness this history. The most I probably talked in a whole year. <laughs> Only because I've been drinking probably. Uh, but yeah. I don't like my picture taken. I don't like talking. I don't talk shit unless someone says something to me. Mm -hmm. So, congratulations, you got me. I got you. <laughs> hey, yo, and you know what? You know, we, we got all y'all right here, Caffeine TV. You mentioned perception. They say perception is uh, I, one's reality. I, I won the belt last month. And I want to ask you a question about that. I didn't exact. What, what question do you have? I want to ask you, what do you perceive for your future? Because you said you mentioned perception. What do you perceive for your future, and what's real in terms of your future in, um, as, the as our champion? I'm the cruiserweight and not the Vixen is because I wanted to push myself more. I wanted to challenge myself more. Mm -hmm. Basic it's the guys. I don't mean to sound like that. Guys versus girls. And it, ready to eat for everyone. But I felt like it was going to push me more. And that's why I did first. The Vixen list is not that 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 big. So I felt like I would have had. Matt! Matt! One second! Then it's plants could wait. <laughs> I said in my interview that out of everyone on the list, you were the most challenging. You were the most challenging. And honestly, because I was the bowler that I was, that I knew I was, and even though I'm not that bowler anymore, I knew that I was going to have issue with you. You beat me before. Yeah, yeah. And I came back today. The, the cruiserweights know the belt has been in this too for the last eight months, other than Malachi for one month. Mm -hmm. So, so that, that's what happens. So we'll be back and we'll see what happens. So all so, the cruiserweights, bring so it up. I have no, I have no uh, ill towards you. You're the champ. You're the champ. You kidding me? That's why I said I wanted to make sure I said five before I left. Wait, yeah. wait. Look at this. <laughs> this right, this right here, this right here. Yo. This trio oh, right here. Oh, it's bowling. It's bowling. And, and you know what? And, 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 and all the bowlers watching this uh, with an alliance, hey, oh. get your alliance together for Unholy Alliance. Oh. Anybody want to bowl with me and Matt for Unholy? Are you good with that? I got to find out when that is. 
I, my schedule is tough right now, but well, we'll see what happens. Well, it seems like February. It seems like they're getting it together. Make okay. sure you get get it together. Cruiserweight, step your game up. That's, That's all right. I got to say. Step your game up, <laughs> and we're here all day.